Hi, my name is Konstantin Baum. I'm a master of wine and it's time to talk about wine prices again. My last video on this topic was picked up by the YouTube algorithm and kind of went viral. And I want to use this video in order to address some of the questions that you guys had. I will also blind taste these four different wines that a local wine merchant picked out for me in order to go into more detail on how I identify quality in a wine. I do not know anything about these wines apart from the fact that they are all made from the same grape variety and are from different countries and sell at different price points. Sounds impossible, let's find out. First of all, hello to all of the new faces. I'm very happy about the recent growth of this channel. If you haven't subscribed yet, then please do and turn on the notification bell. It's free and it's your chance to learn more about wine. The question I'm trying to answer today is whether it's possible to identify the quality of a wine without seeing the label just by tasting the wine. In my previous video on this topic, I explained the relationship between the price and the quality of a wine with this graph. Warning, if you're allergic to Sharpie noises, then put your fingers into your ears now. As the price increases, the quality on average also increases, but at some point, the quality does not change anymore, even though the price can rise indefinitely. The most expensive bottle of wine ever was the 1945 Romane Conti, which sold at Sotheby's recently for 558,000 US dollars. The highest score anyone has ever received, including Romane Conti, is 100 points. This graph represents the average. There are, of course, also exceptions to the rule, like wines that get great scores but are really cheap. And there are wines that are pretty expensive, even though they are bad in quality, like for example this 1974 Lafitte Rothschild that currently retails for 550 US dollars, even though it got this pretty bad review from Robert Parker. This wine is browning badly, has a tired, stale, flat taste and is inexcusably diluted and very short and thin on the palate. 56 points, that's 0.1 point per dollar. In blind tastings, it can get difficult if you have to identify the price of the wine and you have over and under performers in the mix. What you are actually tasting is not the price, the actual dollar signs of the wine, but its quality in context with its origin. In order to get to the price, you therefore also have to identify the origin, the grape varieties, the winemaking procedures, and maybe even the vintage. A very good Cabernet Sauvignon from South Africa might cost only 20 US dollars, while the same style and quality from Poyac in Bordeaux might cost a few hundred US dollars. This is also why it's so difficult for untrained wine tasters to identify the quality of a wine in a blind tasting. They do not have the tasting experience and do not know about pricing in different regions. They might really enjoy the juicy, fruity 10 US dollar Cabernet Sauvignon, while the 100 US dollar Cabernet Sauvignon that might be considered of higher quality by wine geeks is too tannic for their taste. In order to become a master of wine, I had to practice blind tastings regularly. And in order to pass the exam, I had to identify 36 different wines, including the origin, grape varieties, winemaking, and quality levels. But now it's time to find out whether I can actually identify the price of the wines in a blind tasting, so let's go. Man, I can't believe this actually worked. Magic. So these wines are actually in the order that the wine merchant picked. One, two, three, four. I don't know anything about the wines apart from the fact that they are made from the same grape variety and are being sold at different price points. My wife labeled those wines and put the price onto the bottle and then put them into these socks. So I haven't really touched the wines at all. And now I'm going to first of all try to find out which grape variety these wines are being made from. And then I want to find out what the price levels are for each and every one of those wines. So just by looking at the wine, I can already say that they are from a light skinned grape variety. The color is not super intense, but it varies quite a bit. So wine one and two are quite bright purple, while three and four also have some garnet reflexes there. Flavor wise, it's very much on the berry fruit and cherries. So you got some blackberries there, some raspberries and also some cherry flavors. I also get some oak influence in wine two, three and four. Wine 1 doesn't have much oak influence. On the palate, the wines are quite velvety with fresh acidity, fine granular tannins. Wine 2 maybe has most tannins. Wine 3 and 4 seemed a little bit more aged, so they are a bit rounder and 1 is quite light and fresh. So I would say 
this grape variety is for me pretty easy to pick. I think this is a Pinot Noir or Spätburgunder as we call it in Germany. So let's go through the wines one by one. Wine number one seems to be more juicy, fruit driven. Uh, there's not a lot of oak influence here. So I'm thinking this is more of an entry level style. I would say this is probably from my home region Baden. I might even put it to, into the south of Baden, into the Kaiserstuhl area because of the style. It's a rich and generous Pinot Noir nevertheless. It's Burgundian in style but I think the clones that were used here are not Burgundian clones. For me it seems more like a German clone style. I would say this is probably around 10 euros, roughly 10 US dollars. It's an entry-level wine but it's well made and it actually has some aging potential but I wouldn't keep this for a long long time. So let's move on to wine number two. For me, wine number two is quite a hedonistic, rich and concentrated wine with lots of oak flavor as well. The oak is well integrated, but the thing is, as soon as you use barriques, you have to charge more for your wine. A barrique can cost easily a thousand US dollars and the winemaker somehow has to make the money back through selling the wines. I think this style-wise, could be from a warmer region, so it could be from a place like, for example, Santa Barbara, where great classic Pinot Noirs are being produced. But it could also be from the old world. I think uh, in Germany we also have some wines that go into this direction, for example, from the Pfalz region, from Baden, my home region. Also uh, in the R, you have some opulent Pinot Noirs. This is stylistically not really what I would expect from the R. I would maybe say this could be Pfalz or Baden. I'm not really sure. It's quite difficult. Um, I, I would, I would um, really struggle to put it directly into one place. But if I had to, I would probably say it's from Baden. And the price point I think here is um, way higher than this wine. So I think this could be um, a 30 to 40 euro wine. So let's move on to wine number three. As an MW student, I assessed quality following an acronym, which was BLIC, B-L-I-C. So I look at the balance, the length, the intensity and the complexity of the wine. If the wine scores high in all of those four, then it's a great wine. And this is also how I assess those four wines. This wine is actually quite a bit more aged than the previous ones. I think you can see the garnet color here. This is a pretty clear indicator that the wine has some age. And if you smell the wine, you also get some aged mature flavors like mushrooms and forest floor. This is pretty typical for Pinot Noir. Might sound weird, but this is actually a pretty good sign for quality. I would actually say that this is from Burgundy stylistically and this fits very much with Burgundy. It's probably not a great wine from Burgundy, not necessarily a premier or Grand Cru wine. I would say it's probably more like village quality level. Price points in Burgundy are really difficult. Prices can be insanely high for pretty low quality. I think this is solid and I would guess that this retails between 30 and 40 euros, similar to the previous wine, even though I thought the wine number two was way better than this wine, wine number three. And now let's move on to wine number four, the last one. So this wine also has some age. You can see that again by the color, but also by the flavor profile. For me, this is more vibrant, more concentrated, more intense. So wine number four has a similar style to wine number three. It's also quite complex, fresh, vibrant, and classic. So I would also be in Burgundy with wine number four. For me, this is slightly higher in quality. It's not super high quality, but I'd say it's maybe a premier cru. I would say this retails probably around 50 to 60 euros. It's time for the big reveal. Let's do this. I said wine number one retails around 10 euros. So let's see whether I was right. Okay, well, I know this wine and it retails for 11.50. So that's a pretty good price. It's the Bercher Burkheimer Spätburgunder Ortswein from the 2016 vintage. So one down, three more to go. So wine number two I thought was also from Baden and I thought it was from the 30 to 40 euro price bracket. So let's see whether I was right. Okay, cool. 
So this is Weingut Kopp from my hometown actually. It's from around the corner and it's from a pretty good site, the Sonnenberg, and it's 31 euros. So it's actually pretty cheap. I would say this is definitely worth the money. So if you can find this somewhere, go and get it. So let's move on to wine number three. I said this is a village wine from Burgundy. I said it was in the 30 to 40 euro price bracket. Let's see whether I was right. And yes, it's a Pomar village and it retails for 43 euros. I thought this was not necessarily the best Pomar I've tasted. So now let's reveal the last one, wine number four. I thought this was from Burgundy. I thought it was in the 50 to 60 euro price bracket. I thought it was pretty good quality. Maybe a Premier Cru, maybe a Bone Premier Cru. So a pretty good Pinot Noir from the Pinot Noir homeland. Let's see what it is. And it's a Maurice Saint-Denis Le Privatier. So it's a Maurice Saint-Denis Village wine from the 2011 vintage, same vintage as wine number three, and it's 47 euros. That's it, four different wines and I was pretty much right with all four of them, so I'm happy with the results. You see, expensive wine is not for suckers. Sometimes you need a little bit of experience in order to appreciate the quality and I'm pretty sure that I will appreciate all four of them tonight with dinner. Thank you for watching. If you like this video then please like it down here, subscribe to my channel and turn on the notification bell so that you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. My question of the day is which is your favorite value wine? Please comment down below. I hope I see you guys again soon. Until then, stay thirsty.